So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, which has been approved for use in the UK. And this is great news. This is great news because it's going to be um, uh, some of it's going to be produced in the UK. So a quick correction. I thought AstraZeneca was a US based company, but it's not. It is a Swedish, uh, British, Swedish multinational pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical company that, with its headquarters in Cambridge, England. Um, so yeah, you know, that's a bit of a correction there. So, um, yeah, anyways, um, enjoy the video. It's going to be a lot easier when it comes to supply lines. Um, it's going to create jobs and things like that as well within the UK. Also the fact that, um, at least this is something, you know, the country can actually be proud of, you know, in line with the US, not to say that, you know, those people are going to say, oh, it's the UK's jab. We did it. I'm pretty sure AstraZeneca are a UK, US based company. Um, so the vaccine has been approved for use within the UK. The first few doses to be given out on Monday. Um, so this article is from um, the 30th of December. So basically next Monday, the 4th of January, we're going to see uh, people getting immunised with this. Um, there will be 530,000 doses available from next week. And vaccination centres will now st uh, will start inviting people to come get the jab. The only problem is you need two doses. So you know that number is not as high as it kind of seems to be. It should be about half really. Um, when you think about the fact that you need two doses. Priority groups for immunisation have already been identified, starting with care home residents, the over 80s and, and um, health and care workers. Uh, it comes as millions more people, millions more in England are placed in tier four restrictions. So, you know, this this vaccine is great news, but this isn't over. And we're going to be talking about the NHS um, in another video to come next week. So, or probably this week, might be tomorrow, who knows. Eventually, all over 50s and young adults with health conditions will be offered the jab um, in the first phase of rollout. More than 25 million people in total. It's hoped that about 2 million patients a week could be vaccinated with two vaccines now approved. We just got to hope we have the staff to do this. On Tuesday, um, 53,135 new COVID cases were recorded in the UK, the highest single rise um, since mass testing began, as well as 414 more deaths within 28 days of a positive test. So... The Medicines and Healthcare Production uh, Regulatory Agency, the MHRA, has authorised two full doses of the Oxford vaccine, with a second dose to be given 12 weeks after the first. The immunisation campaign will now shift to giving as many people the jab as possible, um, th possible their first dose with a second dose following that. The Pfizer-BioNTech uh, jab rollout began. The aim was to give the second dose after three weeks, but based on advice from the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, the aim is now to give as many vulnerable uh, people the first jab. Um, irrespective of, um, and the, sorry, the based on the Joint Commission on Vaccination and Immunization, the aim now is to give as many vulnerable people some protection from COVID-19, irrespective of the jab they're given. The Oxford vaccine is easier to store and distribute as it can be kept at normal fridge temperatures, unlike the Pfizer-BioNTech one that has been kept at minus 70. And that's the key here, is the Oxford one is far more shelf stable. And that's going to be good news for, you know, places like rural areas and places like that, where, you know, it's going to be much harder to um, you know, ship out these the the BioNTech one, the Pfizer BioNTech one, to keep it at minus seventy, and it's also even better news for developing countries which might not have the facilities to um, you know, keep the uh, Pfizer one at minus seventy degrees C, but they should have you know, you can make accessible you know refrigerated vans and things like that where you can use that for food, um, you can use that for this uh, potentially use it for this um, vaccine. You'd have to check temperatures and stuff, and it's, so it's great news for the developing world, especially because this vaccine is cheaper to produce the um, AstraZeneca one. Um, there is more confidence about the UK made, uh, the U as it's made in the UK, whereas the Pfizer one has to be shipped in from Belgium. So obviously you've got supply issues with um, things like Brexit. So pregnant and breastfeeding women can now take either two of the uh, approved vaccinations. Triumph, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson has held it at the latest vaccine development as a triumph for British science um, and, and American science for AstraZeneca. We will now uh, move to use the vaccine in as many people as possible. The English chief, so Chris Whitty, praised the considerable effort in making, getting us to this point. And we've got some more bluster here from these other people. So there's a short video on how this works. This is um, a really easy to follow video. Even I can follow this one. So we're going to take it away, uh, Laura Foster. News about the Oxford vaccine is a big deal for people in the UK. More significant than news about the other COVID vaccines. That's because the UK government has already ordered 100 million doses of it. That's more doses than we've ordered of any other vaccine. Enough for 50 million people. That's almost enough for everyone in the UK. But it's also much cheaper and easier to store than the other leading vaccines. And that's good news because that can make it easier to distribute it to people around the world. The Oxford vaccine is called Chadox or Chadox-1 and is made from a genetically engineered virus that causes the common cold in chimpanzees. But it's... It's a bit weird, isn't it? It's a bit weird. 
has been altered and uses the blueprint of COVID to make it look a lot more like coronavirus. And because the vaccine resembles the coronavirus, the body's immune system then begins to produce antibodies and T-cells to fight it. It means if this person comes across coronavirus again, they've already got exactly what they need to fight it off. It does sound a bit, um, you know, umbrella corpy, you know, something you'd hear about in Raccoon City. Um, but, you know, it's got to hope this works. There are some issues here. So a trial showed that two full doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech uh, jab were 95% effective at preventing in infection. Whilst the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine showed 62% effectiveness, although even in cases where people were infected, there were no cases of serious um, illness needing hospital treatment. So it's a bit, I'm not sure about the AstraZeneca one, how effective it is. And they haven't fully figured it out by the sounds of things. So trials of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine also showed that when people were given a half dose, then a full dose, effectiveness hit 90%, but there's not enough clear evidence to approve the half dose, full dose idea. However, unpublished data suggests that leaving a longer gap between the first and second doses uh, increases the effectiveness of the jab in the subgroup given the vaccine. This way, it was found to be 70% effective after the first dose. Um, all, all the vaccines are expected to be equally effective against new variants. Um, so, you know, it's worth keeping an eye on, um, you know, to figure, you know, it's worth keeping an eye on to see, you know, longer term how effective the vaccine is. Uh, me being um, a youngish, you know, 24 year old guy, um, with hopefully no pre-existing conditions, um, I'm not going to be the front of the queue for this. Um, neither will a lot of the viewers that watch the content on this channel based on YouTube analytics. So um, we'll see how long term, how effective it is. But you know, this is um, this is good news. And um, you know, let's not forget here, hospitals are under extreme pressure. You know, this isn't over yet. You know, this is a um, a good win in the battle against COVID. But you know, the hospitals. Um, you know, are filling up. Um, you know, that's something we've talked about before. We're in tier four. A lot. Of the, I think it's like three quarters of the country are now in tier four. So that should tell you everything you need to know that this thing is far from over. But um, you know, with with two vaccines, especially one that's um, easier to mass produce in this country, is uh, phenomenal news. And um, let's hope you know twenty twenty one brings us more luck than twenty twenty did because um, last year was not great. And um, so I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.